<clears throat> Good. Uh, Senator Rohn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Kavanaugh. My colleagues on the other side are accusing the Democrats of some sort of political conspiracy, but that's because they want us to distract. They want to distract us from what happened here this morning. And what happened here this morning was that we heard from Dr. Christine Ford, who spoke to us with quiet, raw, emotional power about what happened to her. She said she was 100% certain that it was you who attacked her. And she explained how she came forward, how she struggled with her decision, how she wanted the president to know so that he could make a better choice. So when you and my colleagues on the other side accuse us of ambushing, ambushing you with false charges, I think we all have to remember Dr. Ford's testimony and her courage. Let me go back to something you just uh, said in your opening. Uh, you said you thought at your first hearing the Democrats were an embarrassment. We asked you a lot of questions in those days. And which of our questions do you think were an embarrassment? I asked you about dissents you had written as a judge, an amicus brief you wrote as a lawyer, and your knowledge of sexual harassment and abuse by your close friend and mentor, Alex Kozinski. All valid questions in this setting. They are valid because this is a job interview for one of the most important positions of trust in this country. And earlier you agreed that this process of advice and consent is really a job interview. Certainly not a criminal trial. There's certainly no entitlement for you to be confirmed to the Supreme Court. Our credibility, character, and candor of a nominee things for us to consider in your job interview? I think my whole life is uh, subject to consideration. Is that yes? Credibility, character, and my, candor my are those specific traits that would be of interest to us as we consider putting you for life on the highest court in the country. Credibility, character, and candor. Uh, of course, and as part of my whole life. Is temperament also an important trait for us to consider? For 12 years, everyone who's appeared before me on the D.C. Circuit has uh, praised my judicial temperament. That's why I have the well, unanimous, well-qualified rating from the American Bar Association and all the people who have appeared so before you. So you would agree that temperament is also... Uh, an important factor for us Yes, and us like the, the federal public defender who testified to the committee um, talked about how I uh, was always open-minded and how I'd ruled in favor of unpopular defendants, how I was fair-minded. I think universally lawyers who've appeared before the DC so the answer is yes. I am running out of time. You know, we only have five minutes. So uh, let me get to something else. In your Fox News interview, you said that you, quote, always treated women with dignity and respect, end quote. And that in high school, you never, quote, drank so much that you couldn't remember what happened the night before. Would you say the same thing about your college life? Yes. So I'd like to read your statements from people who knew you in college. And Sarah, can I Senator say one thing? Coons noted yeah. that James Roche said, your roommate, although Brett was normally reserved, he was a notably heavy drinker, even by the standards of the time, and he became aggressive and belligerent when he was drunk. So is your former college roommate lying? Uh, I would refer you to what I said in the sealed or redacted portion about his relationship with the other two roommates, and I'm going to leave it at that. I will say, Senator, you're asking about college. Um, I got into Yale Law School. That's the number one law school in the country. I had no connections there. I got there by busting my tail in I feel college. insulted as a Georgetown graduate. In <laughs> Excuse me? Go on. I'm sorry. Uh, it's ranked number one. That doesn't mean it's number one. Um, and, you know, in college, num two things. A, I studied. I was in cross-campus library every night. And B... I played basketball for the junior varsity. I tried out for the varsity. With, uh, the first day I arrived on campus, we had captain's workouts. I played basketball every day all through. And then as soon as the season was over in late February, captain's workouts started again. I was obsessed with so you the were not basketball I'm, player. I only have 23 seconds. So you were not as uh, sloppy drunk, and so your roommate was lying. What I, about refer you, I will refer you again to the redacted portion. I'll say... Look at my academic record. 
and I don't usually like to talk about myself this way, but in response to you, you know, I, I, I worked very hard in college in my studies, and I also played uh, basketball, I did sports, and I also okay, did wait. socialize. Excuse me, I know that the chairman is going to stop me, but I do have some other references from people who knew you who say that uh, you were not the uh, um, your, basic your fire bar, but hold on. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator, Mr. Chairman. Senator, tell us. I would like to, Mr. Chairman, okay, I'll wait until we finish because I just want to enter some oh, letters could, into yes. the record. Could I, I do wasn't that? wasn't clear that's it's what you question. were doing. I could go on. But, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter into the record four letters. One is dated September 18th, 2018, to you from all of the Democrats on this committee. Another is another is a letter dated September 18th to Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI, and Don McGahn, counsel to the president, signed by all the Democrats on this committee. A September 21st letter signed by uh, Chuck Schumer and Dianne Feinstein to the president, and a September 26th letter signed by all the Democrats on this committee, all requesting an FBI investigation because you did say all we have to do is ask, and the implication being that if we ask, an investigation will happen, and it certainly has not happened. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Without Department. objection, th that will be included. Senator, tell us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Kavanaugh, thank you again for being here, and I apologize for uh, what you're going through right now. I can't imagine. And I've gone through a campaign and had a lot of smears, but it pales in comparison to what you've had to deal with. Um, I, I think one thing, uh, one point that I'd like to make from the onset, if we go back and review how this committee process has worked, we've got a lot of work to do. We've had members take it on themselves to release committee confidential documents instead of respecting the process. We've had an allegation held for nearly seven weeks that would have given us plenty of time to investigate. And then when we finally got the information, I invite everybody, particularly the American public, there is an investigation going on. And a lot of it's been documented. There's a chronology on the website that says that each and every time an allegation was made, the staff followed up on it. And sadly, in several different instances, the Democrats declined to participate. They listened in on at least one interview with you, didn't ask a single question. If they wanted to find other leads and other things to do, why not ask? If you're really trying to get to the facts, if you're really trying to do your job to investigate, we're investigating. It's our job. I think in response to the ranking member's question that uh, Judge Kavanaugh said, I'm here, you're asking me questions. But you know what? When the committee staff, I assume directed by the ranking member, says, no, we're not going to ask questions of Judge Kavanaugh when he wanted to come in and clear his good name, what are you really after? You may not be after the truth. Maybe you are. Maybe you're after executing some sort of a political agenda. Maybe it's a mix of both. But I think you've been treated unfairly, and I'm amazed that after 32 hours of testimony, one and a half hours I sat in this room, that none of these questions came up when it was all fully known. Lawyered up, as a matter of fact. I also want to go back to the comments this morning. I think I heard, and we can go back to the record if someone disagrees with me, I think I heard Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Ford say that she wasn't aware of the fact that we said we'd come to California, we'd make it confidential, we'll completely depose and ask any questions you want to. I think I heard her say she wasn't aware of that. I don't know where that came with counsel or not, or whether counsel just neglected to tell her her counsel, but the fact of the matter is that offer was out there. We were moving heaven and earth and even moving the schedule to get to the truth. We're doing an investigation. We're doing our level best. I hope that the American people who are watching this will go out to the, the Senate Judiciary website and take a look at this chronology. Take a look at the lack of investigation on the part of the people who want the investigation. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Every opportunity you have to go and question a witness, every opportunity that we've had to find more truth, to find more facts, we've done it. It's documented. We've got sworn statements. We're doing our job. We're doing the committee work. Judge Kavanaugh, I um, also have to say, I believe that you're a part of, you're the first major target of a new strategy that's developed here. And I think you're right. I think it's just basically, 
attack, attack, attack. It's not advising consent. It's search and destroy. And maybe one of the best evidence of this is one of the websites, one of the groups that are out there attacking you and trying to create fodder and all of these red herrings has already acquired a URL for the next judge that they're going to attack. URL's right here. They've already purchased it. They're ready to go. This is the playbook. This is the way we're going to run this committee from this point forward. Take a look at it. I'll, I'll make sure we get it out on our website. We've already got a stop another judge who hasn't been nominated URL from the same people that are trying to mobilize people to attack you. There are some people here who may sincerely have concerns. I would tell you to pound the table with your ranking member and the leadership on your side to say, why didn't we ask questions? Why did we listen in and defer? Why didn't we do our part of the investigation while this leader did everything he could to accommodate Dr. Ford and to run down every single lead that's been presented to us? Weeks after it was known to the minority. I look forward to supporting your confirmation. I believe that you're going to be on the bench. You know, as, as Senator Cornyn said, these are allegations that can be pursued through the courts if they actually rise to a level where they can be prosecuted. And everybody on the other side of this dais knows that that's not going to happen. Senator Barker. Judge Kavanaugh, um, you drink on weekdays as well in high school, not just weekends. Is that on correct? weekdays? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd say that's rare. Are you talking about during the school year? I'm, I'm talking about the calendars that you provided during these dates. Oh, that's that's in, the, in the summer after a football workout when we went over to... You drank on weekdays, yes or no, sir? Uh, in the summer, when we went over to Timmy's house on July 1st, that would indicate yes. Yes, in other words, that, that July 1st reference to skis, went over for skis, that's brewskis, correct? And after Tobin... Sir, sir, I just need a yes or no. That brewski's, right? Well, I need to explain in context. Uh, you just said, sir, that you drank on weekdays. That's all I was looking for. Well, no... If I may, if I may, uh, ask, if I may ask the next question, sir. We're, you said uh, clearly on the record, I just want you to restate it, that you never in your life, after drinking heavily to the point of throwing up, and again, you said you had a weak stomach, you said you never had gaps in memories, never had any losses whatsoever, never had foggy recollection about what happened. Is that correct, sir? Yes or no? That's, that's what I said. Okay. Um, sir, you also said uh, that this past two week, uh, this past uh, two weeks, has been a two week effort, calculated and orchestrated as a political hit. Are you saying that Dr. Ford's efforts to come forward, to prepare for the very difficult testimony she gave today, to travel to Washington D.C. and tell us about her experience, have all been an, part of an orchestrated political hit? And, and are you basically calling her some kind of political operative? I've said uh, my family has no ill will toward Dr. Ford. She wanted confidentiality. Her confidentiality was blown by the actions of this committee, and it's caused, it's turned this into so, a sir, let's just be clear. In other words, you're, you're, you have problems with the, the senators that are up here and how we conducted it, but you're not saying in any way that she is a political pawn, political operative. You're, you, you have sympathy for her. She is talking about a sexual assault. Is that correct? I said uh, all allegations should be taken seriously. You should listen to both sides. Do, My do family wish, has no do, ill will do, toward her. Thank you, sir. Do you I, wish that she never came forward? Senator, I did not do this. The I, witness. That, that's not my question, sir. Could you try to answer my question, sir? Do you wish she never came forward? Uh, the witnesses who were there say it didn't happen. Okay, sir. Do you wish she just remained silent then? I wish uh, the witnesses who were there say it didn't happen. All allegations should be taken seriously. So, so even if it's in the final days, days before a vote, if someone has a credible allegation of experience that they held for a long time, that person should be allowed to come forward. And in fact, as she said, it was her civic duty. You're not questioning her sense of civic duty, are you? She did come forward, and then the then the was. I, I know you have a lot of political animus. You stated it very clearly towards my colleagues and I on this panel. What I what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is, you you do not see her specifically as part of an orchestrated event. Did, she is not a political party. I don't know her, but I've also said that we bear no ill will toward her. She wanted confidentiality. This could have been handled. And, and, and I understand, but she came forward. She took a great extent. Yeah. Your family has gone through hell. Her family has gone through hell. She sat here. She told her truth. And, and you made the allegation that she was coordinating it. 
Uh, I do not think she was coordinating with I, the I did not say that. That's a... That she, you said that's this, a, I'm sorry. So you said that others were making a coordinated... It's coordinated by... Forgive me. You were talking about us, not room. her. So she was not, room coordinated. she was not doing this for political yeah. efforts in 2012 when she talked to her therapist about this attack. She was not coordinating about this painful when she made revela painful experience when she made revelations to her husband. She did not coordinate in 2013, 16, 2017, before you even nominated when she revealed that it was you with three different people that had sexually assaulted her. That wasn't coordination. And Liz All the witnesses who were there say it didn't happen. Ms. Kaiser, her longtime friend, said she never saw me at a party sir, with sir, or without Dr. I, and Ms. Kaiser has said clearly, and I'll quote what she said. She said she does not remember that I in question. That, that, that supports what you said. But she also says that she believes Dr. Ford. And, and so my, my colleague, Lindsey Graham, who I, I respect and have admiration to and has been a partner of mine, he said voting no would be legitimizing the most despicable thing in American politics. Do you think that people who believe Dr. Ford are, are legitimizing despicable things? Those of us who think she's a credible witness, the allegations against her are credible, do you think that somehow we are engaging in something that's despicable? Senator, I, I say listen to both sides before you make a bottom line conclusion. And Look at the... That is look, fair. Look, and I have 10 seconds left, sir. You can, you can answer after I finish. You have 10 seconds left. That is fair. Listen to both sides. This is not about somebody, one side being despicable, the other side not. Listen to both sides. She was a credible... I'm, I'm going to finish my question. You can answer. The, the, she, she gave credible, meaningful testimony, a woman who had the courage to come forward and tell her truth, uh, sir. And, and that's what I'm just asking you to say. She is not... A, a political pawn. She is not orchestrating. She is not part of the Clinton's efforts to get some kind of revenge. She is a woman who came here with corroborating evidence to tell her truth. Is that a Thank question? You. No, sir. It was a final statement. Senator Cruz. Just on one thing, Mr. Uh, Chairman, the, yes. the, the evidence is uh, not corroborated at the hey. time. The witnesses who were there say it didn't happen. No, that's not what okay. they said. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Kavanaugh, you and your family have been treated incredibly poorly by Senate Democrats and by the media. And let me say also, I think Dr. Ford and her family have been treated incredibly poorly by Senate Democrats and the media. You have both seen your good names dragged through the mud. And this has been, sadly, one of the most shameful chapters in the history of the United States Senate. Let me say to you and your family, thank you for a lifetime of public service. I will say, watching your mother's pained face has been heart-wrenching as she's seen her son's character dragged through the mud after not only your lifetime of public service, but her lifetime of public service as well. And I know as a father, there's been nothing more painful to you than talking to your daughters and explaining these attacks is it worked out? that the media is airing. <coughs> I also believe, though, that the American people are a fair-minded people, that the American people can set aside the partisan warfare of Washington and look to substance and facts. And that is the charge of this committee. Now, there have been three different sets of allegations that have dominated the media. I think it's important to note that two of those sets of allegations had so little corroboration that even the New York Times which is no conservative outlet, refused to report on them because they could find no basis for them. And it was striking in this entire hearing that not a single Democrat in this committee asked about two sets of those allegations. Ms. Ramirez's allegations and the allegations of the client of Mr. Abinetti. Not a single Democrat. I don't know if they were just too embarrassed. Mr. Abinetti's allegations were so scandalous that the ranking member omitted his client's most scandalous accusations of you as a criminal mastermind, essentially, yeah. omitted those scandalous accusations from her statement. This hearing has focused, rightly so, on the allegations Dr. Ford presented. And let me say, I think the committee did the right thing in giving Dr. Ford a full and fair opportunity to tell her story. That's what we needed to do when these allegations became public. And the committee treated her with respect, as we should. I do not believe Senate Democrats have treated you with respect. What do we know? 
We know that her testimony and your testimony are in conflict. A fair-minded assessor of facts would then look to what else do we know when you have conflicting testimony? Well, we know that Dr. Ford identified three fact witnesses who she said observed what occurred. All three of those fact witnesses have stated on the record under penalty of perjury that they do not recall what she is alleging happening. They have not only not not corroborated her charges, they have explicitly refuted her charges. That's significant to a fair-minded fact finder. In addition, you've walked through before this committee your calendars from the time. Now, I will say you were a much more organized teenager than I was, and than many of us were, but it was a compelling recitation of night by night by night where you were in the summer of 1982. That is yet another contemporaneous piece of fact to assess what happened. And we also know that the Democrats on this committee engaged in a profoundly unfair process. The ranking member had these allegations on July 30th. And for 60 days, that was 60 days ago, the ranking member did not refer it to the FBI for an investigation. The ranking member did not refer it to the full committee for an investigation. The ranking member, this committee could have investigated those claims in a confidential way that respected Dr. Ford's privacy. And some of the most significant testimony we heard this morning is Dr. Ford told this committee that the only people to whom she gave her letter were her attorneys, the ranking member, and her member of Congress. And she stated that she and her attorneys did not release the letter, which means the only people that could have released that, that letter were either the ranking member and her staff or the Democratic member of Congress, because Dr. Ford told this committee those are the only people who had it. That is not a fair process. And we should look to the facts, not anonymous innuendo and slander. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a point of personal privilege to respond. Proceed. Mr. Chairman, um, let me be clear. I did not hide Dr. Ford's allegations. I did not leak her story. She asked me to hold it confidential, and I kept it confidential as she asked. She apparently was stalked by the press, felt that uh, what happened, she was forced to come forward, and her greatest fear were realized, was realized. She's been harassed, she's had death threats, and she's had to flee her home. In, a, in addition, the investigation that the Republican majority is heralding is really nothing that I know about other than a partisan practice. Normally, all the witnesses would be interviewed. However, that's not happened. While the majority has reached out to several people, they did not notify me or my staff that they were doing this. And so to argue that we would not participate but not tell us what they were up to is somewhat disingenuous. I was given some information by a woman who was very much afraid, who asked that it be held confidential. And I held it confidential until she decided that she would come forward. Mr. Chairman, would, would the ranking member um Answer a question, please. If I can. I, I have great respect for Senator Feinstein. We've worked together on many topics, and I believe what you just said. Can you tell us that your staff did not leak it? Oh, I don't believe my staff would leak it. I have not asked that question directly, but do you, I do, do you, not believe they Do you know that? Would. I mean, how in the world could that get in the hands of the, of the press? The answer is the people... no. The staff have you have you asked your, have you asked your staff or other I staff members did. on the judiciary committee? Uh, you, pardon me. Well, uh, Jennifer well, reminds me I've asked her before about it, well, somebody, and that's true. Well, somebody leaked it if it wasn't you. Well, it was. Uh, I'm telling you, it was not. I did not. I mean, I was asked to keep it confidential, and and I'm criticized for that too, M Mr. Chairman. It, could I ask the chairman a question, which is, does the committee have a process if there is an allegation against any nominee oh. to assess that allegation in a confidential forum 
rather than in the public, since Dr. Ford requested that it be kept confidential. Is there a process for the committee yeah. for considering confidential yes, allegations? Uh, uh, and the answer is yes, and I sent Senator Tillis pointed out the document that I put out to show of all the things that we've done along the lines of your question. And Mr. Chairman, what would you have done if on July 30th the ranking member had, had raised this allegation with you? As the chairman of this committee, how would you we have We would have done that? like we have done with every uh, background or let's say FBI report that comes from the White House with the nominee, and then uh, subsequent to that, because maybe the FBI got done with it three months ago, we go through the FBI or information comes to us, then we have our investigators in a bipartisan way, both Republicans and Democrats, uh, follow up on those, whatever those questions are or those problems that have to be worked out. So bipartisan investigators could have investigated this two months ago and it could have been heard in a confidential setting without Dr. Ford's name or Judge Kavanaugh's name being dragged through the body. Is that correct? And except for one or two conversations that we had with the judge through our investigators, Democrats didn't participate except in those two, but in those two or one or two, they didn't ask any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. Um, I want to... Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, go may, ahead. I, may, I, may I respond? It's my understanding that her story was leaked before the letter became public. And she testified that she had spoken to her friends about it, and it's most likely that that's how the story leaked and that she had been asked by press, but it did not leak from us, I assure you of that. Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm a little confused. I thought only um, the member of the House and Senator Feinstein and her lawyers had the letter, so her friends she might have talked to about it couldn't leak the letter mm. if they just had a verbal conversation unless she gave them a copy of the letter. It, Senator, I don't think the letter was ever leaked. Well, how, how did the uh, press know to contact her about her complaint? She apparently, she testified here this morning that she had talked to friends about it. They had the letter. And that press had talked to her. The letter was leaked. Senator, our judge, uh, since uh, there was reference to the problems, the legitimate problems and the... Uh, and the change of lifestyle that Dr. Ford had, if you want some time to say the impact on your family, I'd be glad to hear you. If you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. I've, I've talked about that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Then, uh, Senator Harris. Thank you. Judge Kavanaugh, have you taken a professionally administered polygraph test as it relates to this issue? Uh, no. The I'll do whatever the committee wants. Of course, those are not admissible in federal court, but I'll do whatever the committee wants. They're not admissible in federal court because they're Thank not you. reliable, as you, you. as you know. So you've not taken one. Right. Um, all three of the women who have made sworn allegations against you have called for an independent FBI investigation into the claims. You've been asked during the course of this hearing by four different members by my count at least eight times today. Um, and also earlier this week on national television, whether you would call for the White House to authorize an FBI investigation. Each time you have declined to do so. Now, you know, I know you do, that the FBI uh, is, is an agency of men and women who are sworn and trained law enforcement who in the course of conducting uh, background investigations on nominees for the Supreme Court of the United States and others um, are charged with conducting those background investigations because they are sworn law enforcement and they have the expertise and the ability and the history of doing that. So I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you willing to ask the White House to authorize the FBI to investigate the claims that have been made against you. Well, I'll do whatever the committee wants, of so, course. And I've heard you say that, but the witness I've, not, I've, not heard you ask, I've not heard you answer a very specific question that's been asked, which is, are you willing to ask the White House to conduct an investigation by the FBI to get to whatever you believe is the bottom of the allegations that have been levied against you? The FBI would gather witness statements. You have Sir, the witness it's, statements. It's, it, they don't not, make... I don't want to debate with you how they do their business. I'm just asking, are you willing 
to ask the White House to conduct such an investigation because, as you are aware, the FBI did conduct a background investigation into you yes, before we were aware of these most recent allegations. So are you willing to ask the White House to do that and say yes or no, and then we can move on? We've had six background investigations over 26 years. Sir, as it relates to the recent allegations, are you willing to have them do it? The, the, the witness testimony is before you. No witness who was there supports that I was there. Okay, I'm going to take that as a no and we can move on. You have said um, in your opening statement you characterized these allegations as a, as a conspiracy directed against you. Um, I'll point out to you that Judge Justice now, Neil Gorsuch, was nominated by this president. Um, he was considered by this body just last year. I did a rough kind of analysis of similarities. You both attended Georgetown Prep. You both attended very prestigious law schools. You both clerked for Justice Kennedy. You were both circuit judges. You were both nominated to the Supreme Court. You were both questioned about your record. The only difference is that you have been accused of sexual assault. How do you reconcile your statement about a conspiracy against you with the treatment of someone who was before this body not very long ago? I, I explained that in my opening statement, Senator. Um, Look at the, the evidence here, the, the calendars, look at the witness statements, look at Ms. Kaiser's statement. Okay. Um, and then, do you agree that it is possible for men to both be friends with some women and treat other women badly? <clears throat> of course, but the point I've been emphasizing, and that is if you go back to age 14 for me, you will find people, and not just people, lots of people who I've been friends with, some of whom are in this room today, starting at age 14, women, and who talked about my friendships with them through my whole life, and it's a consistent pattern all the way through. 65 women who knew me more than 35 years ago signed a letter to support me after the allegation was made because they know me and they were with me, and we grew up together. We talked on the phone together, and we went to events together. That is who I am, what they've said, what the people who worked with me in the Bush White House, uh, the, the women there. Look at what Sarah Day said in centralmaine.com. Look at the, um, what the law clerks. I have sent more women law clerks to the Supreme Court than any other federal judge in the country. I only have a few seconds left, and I'll just ask you a direct question. Did you um, watch Dr. Ford's testimony? Uh, I did not. I plan Thank to. You, I plan to. Thank you. I plan to, but I did not. So I was preparing mine. Uh, our last five minutes will be uh, Senator Flake, one minute, yeah. and Senator Kennedy, four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when Dr. Ford came forward with her um, account, I immediately said that she should be heard and uh, asked the chairman to delay the vote that we had uh, scheduled. And the chairman did, and I appreciate that. And she came at great uh, difficulty for her and offered compelling testimony. Uh, you have come and done the same. I am sorry for what's happened to you and your family, as I'm sorry for what has happened to hers. And this is not a good process. But it's all we've got. And I would just urge my colleagues to recognize that in the end, we are 21 very imperfect senators trying to do our best to provide advice and consent. And in the end, there is likely to be as much doubt as certainty going out of this room today. And that as we make decisions going forward, I, I hope that people will recognize that. And in the rhetoric that we use, and the language that we use going forward, that we'll recognize that, that there is doubt. We'll never move beyond that. And uh, and just have a little humility on that front. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Flake. Now, Senator Kennedy. <coughs> Senator Kennedy. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Judge, for what you and your family have been through. And I'm sorry for what Dr. Ford and her family have been through. It could have been avoided. Do you believe in God? I do. I 
I'm going to give you a last opportunity. We're right here, right in front of God and country. I want you to look me in the eye. Are Dr. Ford's allegations true? They're not accurate as to me. I have not questioned that she might have been sexually assaulted at some point in her life by someone, someplace. But as to me, I've never done this. Never done this to her or to anyone else. And I've talked to you about uh, what I was doing that summer of 1982, but I'm telling you, I've never done this to anyone, including her. Are Ms. Ramirez's allegations about you true? Uh, those are not. Um, she, um, no, no, none of the witnesses in the room support that. Uh, the, if that, that had happened, that would have been the talk of campus uh, in our freshman dorm. The New York Times reported that as recently as last week, uh, she was calling other classmates seeking to, well, I'm not going to characterize it, but calling classmates last week and just seemed very, um, I'll just stop there. But it's not true. It's not true. Are Ms. Swetnick's allegations made by Mr. Avenatti about you true? Those are not true. Never met her. Don't know who she is. There's a letter released within two hours of that breaking yesterday from, I think, 60 people who knew me in high school, men and women, who said it was, uh, their words, nonsense, totally, you know, the whole thing, that totally ridiculous. None of these allegations are true? Correct. No doubt in your mind? Zero. I'm 100% certain. Not even a scintilla? Not a scintilla. 100% certain, Senator. You swear to God? I swear to God. That's all I have, Judge. Judge Kavanaugh, thank you very much. Hearing adjourned.